G'day. Every so often someone walks into my workshop with a box of things and says, I saw these and thought you might like to have a look at them. So I do. Today I've got a, um, a rather rare beast, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. But uh, it's another chuck uh, and I'm just going to take it apart and see whether it's worth salvaging and what I can do with it. It's, it's got a bit of a problem though, in that it's a four jaw self-centering chuck, a scroll chuck. And those things, um, let's just say that they're, they're not a good idea for most applications. This is the basic problem. When you've got a three jaw self-centering chuck, it centers around or hexagonal piece of, of work quite nicely because you know three three lines are defining the, the, the surface of the cylinder. But when you go to a four jaw, unless the material that you're holding is exactly, and I mean exactly square, these four jaws that come in together, and this is assuming that there's no errors in those jaws too, they will they will meet up if that's exactly um, square. If for some reason your material isn't quite square, it means that two of these jaws are going to clamp and stop the, the scroll moving, while the other two have still got some way to go. And so you end up with a four jaw chuck and a six jaw for that matter, with a couple of the jaws not working. A six jaw isn't quite so bad because you're usually in that with, with round or hexagonal stock and you've got enough jaws clamping, but with, for a four jaw, uh, it can be a little bit disastrous. What are these things used for? Well, the best thing you can use them for is if you've got some thin wall tube, whether that be square or round, and what the jaws are doing there is they're actually distorting the sides of the tube a little bit to stop it buckling. If you can imagine, I clamp that in a three jaw, what's actually going to happen if that's, if that's thin, it's going to do that. Okay, so by having the extra jaws pushing in there, It, it holds it a bit more firmly, it stops it buckling, stops it distorting, all that sort of thing. And so the same thing applies for a, for a four jaw. This is the chuck here. It's a four inch chuck, 100 millimeters, uh, four jaw self-centric. The, uh, the chuck here is a little bit on the homemade side. Uh, and I think we might be redoing that one uh, if, if, if this chuck is worth keeping anyway. Um, one of the first things to notice with, with self-centering chucks is that the jaws are numbered. Uh, and in this one, the numbers are just in the bottom of the, of the slot there. And the sides of the jaws are numbered. And what's happened here is that the jaws have been put back out of sequence. So that's one of the things that you have to watch for with a, with a, a self-centering chuck. So on the bottom there, there's a two. And on the side of the jaw here, it's a three, four, Two, it's always the last one you look at and there's a two there so this this jaw goes in that slot now you may recall that earlier I, I just said that you know these things work if those jaws are uh, properly aligned and come in just at the right size this is not too awful uh, but there is a little bit of wear there because that gap is a bit higher at the top than it is at the bottom and you can actually see some daylight through there so you know worn jaws are not going to help so first thing to do is take off the jaws. Um, you'll need to, to get rid of those anyway, and as soon as you start disassembling in, in, in earnest, you're going to uh, have trouble getting them out, so you might as well take them off now. If you were taking this chuck apart with a view to putting it um, back into service and, and all that sort of thing, one of the things you'd want to look for is a mark, and that one there will do, just showing how this, this uh, backing plate sits with relation to the, to the chuck body. And the reason for that is that there, there will be some eccentricity and if you've taken off a chuck off your lathe, you take it apart, you clean it out, you put it back together and you put it back the wrong way, you might be introducing some form of eccentricity area. Now it might make things better uh, than they were or it might make things worse. But in, for the sake of consistency, you want to know where you were. That was an adventure in itself. The backing plate here was fastened onto the, the chuck at proper. 
using some, um, I guess they're countersink socket screws that had been ground down so they, they fit in the, um, the countersink there. The socket was ground down so much that I couldn't get an Allen key to, to, to grip it properly or an impact driver. Uh, and I've got a, one of these old fashioned manual impact drivers and uh, this was actually given to me when I was in primary school but it, it still works. Uh, it's, they're, they're remarkably useful tools for those stuck bolts. Eventually I had to go to a, a, um, a screw extractor, an easy out as they're, as they're known. The drills that come in the easy out box are left handed and the idea is you're meant to be able to drill in there and it'll, it'll you know, if the things are only lightly stuck they'll, they'll pull out on a right hand thread. Um, for some strange reason the drills in there aren't all that good but the easy out seem to work so uh, I just drilled a normal hole in there and then uh, in with the easy out to, to, to screw that out. If you're going to put a backing plate onto a chuck you really want to use hex head screws or hex head bolts because what it means is if that if that chuck is for some reason stuck on on your lathe and you want to try and free it if you have a hex head bolt you can get in there with a spanner undo it with these things uh you know ground down head and facing that way getting a getting a uh, an allen wrench um in there to to you know get that out next to impossible the next thing is the two these two screws And that's what makes me, this, this plastic cover is what make, makes me think that this is a, um, uh, a bit of a ring in because um, it's, it's effectively a dust cover for the, for the chuck. Right, now, hmm, interesting. Okay, so that's, that's basically how a self-centering chuck works. You've got the two um, chucky holes, I guess you call them, are, are a mitre gear, uh, and that's a mitre gear. So I'll strip those out, put those in a wash. Usually with a three jaw chuck, there's a little screw in there which retains that, and so you just have to pop those screws out, and then they should slide out, and you can clean them up and, and do whatever you want with them. I've rinsed my uh, parts out in solvent, but I just thought I'd show you this. This is a well, that's just a, a fold of paper towel in a funnel and that's sitting in my solvent tin and I've just swished out the the contents of my uh, wash down tray here into this and you can just see there's a little bit of metal fines and things there but the paper towel will take out the uh, the blobby bits of grease the metal fines all the other debris and just let basically discolored but um, still good to use solvent down the bottom there. Now that the parts are clean, let's have a look at them. These are the two pins that uh, secure the... Um, I can't even think what to call these things, but they do. Uh, and they look like they're, they're relatively good condition, so that's, that's good. Uh, the chuck jaws themselves, yeah, they're not too bad. Doesn't look like anybody's uh, crashed into them into a major way. So that's, that's all good. The pinions themselves, that, that's what I'll call them, pinions. Okay, the pinions themselves, um, they look like they're pretty good. There doesn't seem to be any, any great wear or anything like that on there. Um, the, the plastic thing on the back, yeah, that's okay. Uh, interesting to note too that both the, the jaws and the, the piece on the back there have a serial number on them. One other thing I forgot to mention and is worth checking too is the fit of the jaws in the, in the chuck body itself. So I've got, that's this number three there, that'll do just to, to demonstrate. The rigidity of a, of a, of a self-centering chuck, of, uh, of most chucks for that matter, is due to the way the jaws are held in the body. And so I've got that to go in there and that seems reasonably good. That it's, it's, not, it's not horribly loose, wobbly, all that sort of thing. So I suspect that when that's tightened up, it's not going to be as it was new, but that's going to be all right. But if you get a chuck and the jaws are shockingly loose in it, particularly when you've just taken it apart and cleaned it, then I'd be saying that chuck is, is, is basically junk.
and there you have it back together. Uh, these bolts are just for show uh, because they've got countersinks under them so I'll need to, to do something with that. Um, one thing that has also occurred to me, sometimes you see holes like this in a, in a chuck. Uh, this was used for some studs to hold this on to whatever but um, these can also be used as jacking bolts and so undo these ones here and put the put a bolt or two three in here and that helps you lift that that back off which if you've got a very tight fitting part uh, that's a that's a good thing so there you go that's the um, that's the self-centering four jaw uh, back together it, as I said it didn't look like it was in too bad a nick except that someone didn't understand what the limitations of these things are this is the sort of style I like in my chuck keys uh, the standard chuck key that you get uh, supply when you buy a chuck is is usually only about that long with a with a crossbar. Uh, I like extending them so I've got uh, just a bit more clearance. And as one of the chucks that uh, this key is destined for is going to be used with a rotary table, uh, I need enough that I can have the chuck sitting there and there without having the you know the bar hitting on the on the rotary table. So using this as a pattern, uh, this is the smallest chuck key I currently have. I've got. Uh, I've turned up a piece of, of uh, steel, just some mild steel, nothing terribly exciting. Uh, turned that up to about the right uh, size. Then I've got a high tensile bolt. Um, I was looking around for something a little bit tougher to put in here, and this is one advantage of this this style of, of uh, chuck key is that you can use, you know, mild steel down there and use something a little bit uh, stronger uh, down the business end. But uh, that was a, a, a an M12 bolt, and uh, I just turned the head off um, and turned it down. I'm going to put that in there like that. Bit of Loctite, roll pin to, to secure, then I'll come along and turn the rest of this down to the, to the size I need for putting the, the square on. Here's my handle. Uh, I've got a high tensile bolt. It's been turned down so it's a you know, close fit. I've got some Loctite in there and now put a roll pin in there and I'll, I'll dress that off in a moment. Uh, just to get that smooth but I just thought I'd mention I used to have a lot of trouble with with getting roll pins in the hole because the roll pin is um, and sometimes called a spring pin too uh, this is a, a four millimeter hole that's a and that measures 4.5 millimeters and so trying to get that started can be tricky but what I worked out was that if you compress the end with a set of vice grips like these Right, that squashes that down and well enough so that you can then just start that with the hammer. Once it's started, of course, it gets a lot easier. Uh, so that's just a little trick for, for setting uh, uh, spring pins, roll pins. As you saw, once the bolt was in and down to size, I put the flats on, uh, put the crossbar through and did up the grub screw. I had to uh, give that a little bit of a touch with the, the angle grinder. Uh, I think it's because the, the, the corners in, in the uh, socket here aren't as uh, sharp as they um, could be. And so a bit of work on the, on the corners there and uh, all that sort of thing, but it fits, it fits that one. And uh, more importantly, it fits this one because this is the one that uh, I use quite a bit. So thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one.